Hola, estamos en un hotel céntrico de Madrid con el doctor Bill Grossman, Senior Vice President del Departamento de Desarrollo de Oncología Clínica de Gilead. Hola, doctor Grossman, muchas gracias por recibirnos. Lo primero que le quería preguntar es en qué investigación y tratamientos está trabajando actualmente Gilead. Gilead está trabajando en un número de oncología programas. We spread uh, a number of uh, indications. We have over 20 assets that are in development in oncology. Um, we spread over a dozen different tumor types and indications. And right now we're, we're continuing to expand on our pipeline and, and uh, uh, have a number of products that are now coming to market in oncology. Estos tratamientos mejorarán no solo la esperanza de vida, sino también la calidad de vida de los pacientes con cáncer. Yes, uh, that's one of our main goals, it was bringing transformative medicines to market. And one of the important things as well that we try to uh, bring forward with our transformative medicines is quality of life. And so we also have a number of studies that have demonstrated uh, in, uh, better quality of life with our products. ¿En qué áreas de investigación se está centrando Gilead actualmente? Yeah, we, we focus on a number of aspects at Gilead. We look at uh, uh, one where our base foundations is in virology, um, as well as inflammatory diseases, and then oncology. And what we try to do again is try to bring transformative medicines across all three of those areas. Um, Gilead's known for a lot of their work in bringing cures to HIV patients and to uh, hepatitis C patients. Um, and we're looking to continue to uh, bring transformative medicines to oncology. Uh, and one of our main for focuses again is bringing uh, products that really enhance overall survival as well as their quality of life for patients. ¿Qué nos puedes decir del acuerdo con Arcelex? ¿Cómo mejorará la vida y la esperanza de vida de los pacientes con mieloma múltiple? Yeah, we um, also have a, a really strong, uh, really leading class cell therapy program when Kite uh, with Gilead had purchased uh, a number of years ago, about five years ago. Um, so they've become uh, really a, a leader in cell therapy across um, um, B cell lymphomas. Um, and this recent collaboration with um, our Celex is also now going into multiple myeloma. And so they have an ongoing pivotal trial to uh, look at cell therapies and now in multiple myeloma, which is a very large hematological malignancy for, for patients. And do you have a time frame that these changes will uh, reach the market? Uh, I don't have a timeline today. It's uh, ongoing, a pivotal trial, um, but we have over 16 pivotal trials ongoing in oncology right now. Um, and many of those are, are going to be really noted for the next several years. ¿Por qué consideras que es importante ofrecer alternativas a la quimioterapia? Yeah, historically, chemotherapy has been the, the back, you know, backstay, the mainstay of, of oncology treatments. And what we know with chemotherapy is it only extends you know, life uh, only so, so long. And so these new transformative medicines are really trying to bring uh, transformative, uh, you know, life-saving therapies to patients. Um, so across the board, we continue to try to extend life um, and bring these transformative medicines uh, to patients. And in fact, in some areas of, of cancers, such as the cell therapy space, uh, we actually believe that we're curing some patients um, from their diseases, which were not curable not too, not too long ago. And so these, these uh, different drugs that we're bringing are, are really going to uh, bring transformative uh, science to patients. ¿Crees que en un futuro la quimioterapia ya no será necesaria para curar a los pacientes con cáncer? Yeah, with, with new drugs and new types of mechanisms that we have, such as immunotherapies, um, we believe that we can really start supplanting and, and uh, not, a lot, not, not needing chemotherapy anymore. Uh, so we're continuing to advance and these new types of drugs that target these pathways, uh, such as uh, reinvigorating the immune system to allow us to basically replace chemotherapy. Um, and while doing that, bring a better quality of life. Um, they don't have as many side effects. Um, and then just more importantly, uh, the extending their lives for patients with, with cancer. And do you think that in the future, with those changes, it can help to cure the, this type of cancer? Th th that's our goal. Our goal is to really, um, uh, continue to make strides in our drugs to continue to extend uh, the life of patients. Um, and in some cases, we're hoping to, to bring cures. We'll see, we have to see with how well we do, but we have made tremendous progress in the field of oncology over the last decade in really extending the lives of patients uh, significantly. Um, and so hopefully with um, better combinations, better drugs, we can actually get to 
uh, be able to say that we can do that with breast cancer too. ¿Cómo ha cambiado la investigación sobre el cáncer en las últimas décadas? ¿Cuáles han sido las mayores, los mayores avances? Yeah, so the, some of the biggest areas of uh, advancement and oncology research has been in the fields of immunotherapy. So basically um, allowing your own immune system to uh, kill and eradicate cancer cells. Um, so we've, we've really developed some uh, novel drugs in this space over the last decade that has really improved, again, the overall survival of patients across a number of cancers, um, including breast cancer, um, but also many other types of cancer. Um, and so what we're doing now with uh, cancer immunotherapies is combine them with other uh, direct tumor killing assets, um, but also trying to look at how we can manipulate the immune system even further um, in the micro tumor microenvironment. So we're looking at all of the ways uh, of different ways that tumor cells normally try to escape um, from being recognized by your immune system. And now we're, we're bringing in new, new assets and new drugs that can allow your own immune system to recognize and kill those cancer cells. ¿Qué áreas de investigación tiene que mejorar la comunidad científica para poder avanzar en los estudios sobre el cáncer? One of the, the, the big things that you'll see, uh, you have been seeing over the last uh, decade or so, is in, enhanced collaborations across the pharmaceutical uh, industry, and that includes close collaborations and uh, research collaborations with uh, academic centers as well as other pharmaceutical companies. And together, I think, is the, the key piece of being able to work uh, collaboratively across the industry to really understand how we can uh, bring these great drugs together uh, to patients. So we'll see, hopefully see more of that. And does Gilead have any new collaboration in mind for this next year? Yes, uh, we have a number of new collaborations. <laughs> We've uh, had over 40 um, in the last couple of years, and we'll continue to look for more collaborations across, across the board. Um, we're very excited about some of our uh, collaborations that we've started with Spanish academic centers and research centers, um, and we're going to be continuing to look for more of those opportunities in the future. ¿Por qué es importante el año 2030 para Gilead? 2030 is uh, one of our um, goals that we have to become a, a, a top 10 oncology company. So we put out some very um, big ambitions for Gilead as a company. And one is to uh, bring um, over 20 transformative therapies. Uh, we look to impact over 500,000 patient lives um, while we develop these drugs. And then we're also, uh, again, looking at, to become um, in that process a, a top 10 oncology company. So we're pretty excited about how far we've come so far and we're looking to continue our, our progress in that space. ¿Qué le depara el futuro a los tratamientos contra el cáncer? I, I, I'm very excited. Uh, when I first started uh, in this industry and when I left academics uh, treating patients to then going into trying to help tr develop drugs, um, the, the drugs at that time over you know, 10, 15 years ago did not really bring the transformative medicines that the drugs are today. Um, so many of these exciting drugs that um, when, you were, when you were initially diagnosed with advanced melanoma, for instance, Um, that's no longer a, a, a death sentence for the majority of people. Um, they're actually being able to be treated and live long lives. Um, so we're looking to try to figure out how we can do that for other types of cancers across the, the board. And do you expect that the, the new improvements and the new research is going to do well in the next five, ten years, that you will be able to cure most of the cancers? That, that's our goal. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what the timeline will be. But I think um, the progress that we've made over the last decade um, has been really substantial and in some cases have brought, you know, been able to bring uh, very long survivals and in the cases of cell therapy, um, even cures in that space. Um, so what we're trying to do now is, is to do just what you said, which is bring um, hopefully more cures to patients um, across the board. Um, I think we're off to a good start. I think we have a lot of really good medicines now that we can work with um, and uh, we're hoping to to do that just that in the next uh, decade well thank you that's that's all the questions thank you so much thank you